The vehicle charging system is comprised of three components, the alternator, the batteries, and the cabling that connect those two together. In this Tech Tip video, we're going to look at how each one of these components is dependent upon the other and isolate each one specifically for proper testing. One of the main jobs of the batteries is to regulate system voltage. They do this by providing resistance to the alternator, and how well they do this depends greatly on their state of charge. Batteries act as a variable resistor. When batteries have low voltage, they are like an empty tank and accept a lot of current. As the voltage increases, so does the internal resistance. In these instances, batteries accept less current as they push back on the alternator's output current. Without this resistance from the batteries, the alternator would be working at a full capacity all the time, and the batteries would degrade rapidly from deep cycling, sulfation, and overheated plates. We all know the alternator can charge the batteries, but it is really there to maintain the batteries. Think of it this way. You jumpstart a truck with four dead batteries, and then let it go down the road. There are now four low voltage batteries, or four empty tanks if you will, accepting 40 amps or more each from the alternator. That's 160 amps just dedicated to trying to refill the low batteries. That doesn't even take into account the additional electrical loads that have just been turned on by the driver. If the truck is going across country, he should be fine because the alternator is going to have ample enough time to recharge the depleted batteries. But let's say the stop is just 30 miles down the road. You have an alternator that's been running hot, working inefficiently, and running at 100% capacity trying to replenish a depleted bank of batteries. Bottom line, alternator performance is much better when it is used for its design purpose, and that is maintaining a charge on the batteries. An effective charging system design should include an alternator that is running at 35 to 50% of its capacity. This is the area where an alternator is most fuel efficient and component life is maximized. An alternator with remote sense to ensure the proper voltage is obtained at the battery and this will also keep a stronger push of current into the batteries. Charging cables that meet TMC specifications in regards to RP129A in order to keep voltage loss at a minimum and provide better current flow to the batteries. The proper amount and type of batteries. Different batteries are designed for different purposes so pay special attention to the battery's reserve capacity and the ability to cycle. Finally, when a low voltage situation occurs, load test the battery bank and ensure the battery bank is at 12.4 volts minimum. If it is not, isolate the battery bank and test each battery individually. Once the battery bank passes the test and is above 12.4 volts, move on to the alternator. Check the output of the alternator with the vehicle running to ensure that the alternator is at 13.8 to 14.2 volts. If you are utilizing remote sense, the alternator could be in excess of 14 and a half volts. It is important at this step to do a voltage drop test between the alternator and the battery bank on the alternator charging cables. Once all these tests have been performed and the alternator is found to be the root cause, after the alternator is replaced, recheck the battery bank to ensure that the batteries are at 12.4 volts minimum. If not, charge the batteries and bring them up to between 12.4 and 12.6 volts for lead acid or 12.4 to 12.8 volts for AGMs. It is at this time you may release the vehicle back to service. If you have any questions, please visit us online at delcorimi.com or call the number on your screen.